Okay, welcome. Uh, we're going to do a live coding session. We're going to write some JavaScript just to get a basic idea of how the internet basically works. Uh, the basic setup of a client and a server to talk to each other and exchange some information. Um, let's see if this works when I sit down. Um, okay, so what are we going to do? Uh, I am right now in uh, this uh, folder on my desktop, which is... Uh, the developers day, we've got nothing here, there's nothing up my sleeve, so we're gonna make a little server and a little client just to get an idea of how all this stuff works. This is what drives underneath every major framework. If you get this, you can always save your, yourself out of trouble in the project. So what do we need? We need to have uh, an HTML file so we can serve it. We need to have a server file so we can serve it. Uh, I will also just add for some self-promotion, so I am SPLOR. Uh, the organization that I work for is Absalom GR, and the project that I run is Stone Soup GR, just so you remember. Okay, so what do we have? We have some empty files, we have nothing, right? The first thing we want to do is we want to have something to show to the end user. So, to files, index, and our server, we're going to start with some HTML. Uh, hello. Developers Day, and let's give back some information. Hello, uh, Developers Day. Uh, let's test it out if this actually works. Uh, well, it appears we have HTML. We now officially have an application. This is all you need. We are officially live. This is awesome. However, I'm now serving this from the uh, just from the file system. This has some limitations, right? So let's quickly make a server. I'm not going to use any frameworks because, again, every framework that you're going to be working with underneath uses this stuff. There's no other way to do it than the stuff I'm showing you here. Um, we're using Node.js. I don't know if people know Node.js. It's, uh, it's a nice JavaScript language. It runs on the server. Uh, it does some really cool stuff, actually. Um, and it comes with a great standard library. So the standard library comes with a module, which is the HTTP mo module, uh, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, right? This is the World Wide Web. Uh, not the internet, the World Wide Web. Uh, okay. We probably have to do something with some path and, you know, joining some, some, some path so we actually can access some files. So let's pull in that module as well. And we probably want to serve a file, right? Something from the hard drive that actually is being sent back to our client, and that's the FS. Uh, module in the case of Node, which is the file system module. Okay, great. So let's set up a server. HTT, uh, let's say that we create a server, uh, and our server is a, let's see, yep, create server. This is how easy it is in Node to actually do this. Uh, and our server needs to have something that it does whenever a client connects from a browser or from a command line or from an app or doesn't matter. It needs to do something, right? And it takes two arguments. It takes a request. This, is, this describes what the client wants. And it takes a response. This is the thing that you are going to tell to your client. Uh, and that's it. Now, what we want to do is we want the server to actually start, right? So in order to start it, we just ask it, tell it to listen. In our case, we're going to make it listen on port 8081. And we are going to bind it to the local host. Like if anybody has a phone connected to the same network, you should be able to find me if you manage to guess my IP address, right? <laughs> okay, uh, this is it. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm using a little tool called Nodemon. There are different ones. Basically, all it does is if I run my index.js file with this every time that I type and I save, it just reloads it, which means I don't have to constantly go back and start my server. And it's, it, it, it's just convenient. Um, okay, let's see if this works. Well, I can now go to my local host because I'm running on my own machine, and something is happening. It is blocking, but something is happening, right? If I, Just to show you, if I now go to something which doesn't run, localhost uh, 8085, it's just going to tell me no connection, cannot find it. If I go to this one, we're blocking. Why is that? Well, we are getting back the request here, but we're not telling our client what to do with it. So it's just waiting there. So let's tell our client that, well, I will give you some text. Uh, 
And then I will end the request because a request needs to be ended in JavaScript. This is just the way that Node works. Uh, but this is essentially what every framework does, right? Whether it be Ruby, Python, Java, it doesn't matter. Everything kind of has the same workflow. So let's go back to, and there we have it. Now you see that my, uh, <laughs> that the text that I wrote is coming back. But you see that my browser is not rendering my tags, right? Because I'm not telling my client that what it is. So I should be explicit into what it is. Let's do that. So I'm going to tell my response that I want to write my headers. The headers are the part of the whole request that we do between a server and a client where we tell stuff about what we do. Not the content, so not the actual data, but what type of data is it, when was it created, maybe some security tokens, everything that is the meta data about the actual communication between a client and a server. Uh, in the case of Node, it works like this. You say write head and we tell it 200, which is a status code. HTTP comes with status codes. There are a bunch of them, but basically every status code that's in the 200 range is everything is okay. Everything that's in the 400 range is uh, you did something wrong. Everything that's in the 500 range is I did something wrong. They're quite easy to Google and they're quite useful if you just read up on them. Uh, and then we want to add some extra information. In our, in our case, what we want to tell our client, which in this case is a browser, is that our content type is that of text, HTML. It's a MIME type. Everything has a MIME type. And if something does not have a MIME type, you can make one up. <laughs> Not all clients will support it, but you can make one up. So let's see what happens now. You see how it changed? The only thing that changed is the browser now explicitly knows what to do with it. We've told it this is HTML. A browser is very good at doing stuff with HTML. It's kind of the reason that we use a browser. Um, but by being explicit about it, everybody knows what to do. Great. But we do not want to serve back the static file, right? What we want to do is we want to serve this file because uh, we want to write in an HTML file and not in our JavaScript file. So how do we do that? Well, that's where the file system comes in. We want to read something in from a path. So let's say that we have our HTML path and our HTML path is the combination of whatever folder I am in now, which is in Node, you do it like this. Every language tends to have something that refers to folder that the file that I'm working with, uh, where that is in. In Node's case, that is underscore underscore dear name. It's just something you have to you know, know and remember. And we want to join that with index.html. So that means this folder and this file. Great. Now what we want to do is we want to open up that file. In the case of Node, everything works with streams. That makes it kind of cool and kind of fun to work with, uh, which we do by saying create a read stream and the read stream should be that whatever is at that file. Now note comes with a little trick which is I can now say I want to pipe that uh, I want to read whatever is in there. I want you to read it and I want you to pipe the output back to the response which essentially does this. It does this but then for every line that's in the file and then it calls end. It's a little trick. Uh, if you do any node development, dot pipe is your is your is, is a big friend. So let's see what happens now. Hey, so now we have the file that we just worked on. So let's do let's let, let's see if that's actually true. Let's uh, uh, I can change it. So basically, what do we have? We have a server that does that re accepts a, uh, a connection from a client. The con uh, the client expresses to us that it wants something. We open up a file, we read it back, we say what we're going to send you is HTML. So if you want to do something, use, you know, use the HTML part of this. Um, and we send it back. And now we have a full-fledged server, and this is what every framework essentially does. Now, the point of the day is to build a round trip, right? We now want to make a Ajax request. Like every framework comes with an Ajax request, but every framework does the exact same thing. They just layer stuff on top of it, which is great. It is opinionated, it is, it is abstraction, but they all, in the end, do the same thing, which is 
Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm now just going to use a single HTML file. It's, it's always a bit better in your actual projects to have, you know, your JavaScript and your CSS and your HTML and your server code all in different folders and nicely structured. But in the real world, usually when I start a project, I start with a single index.html until I understand the problem, and that's when I start breaking stuff out. So that's what I'm going to be doing now as well. So JavaScript in the browser. It's very simple to write JavaScript in a browser. This is all you have to do. And now we have a little alert. We are actually running code based on the whole thing. OK, so JavaScript is an event-driven language. Now, what does that mean? It means that there is a loop that is constantly running, constantly running, constantly running. And what I can do is I can put little things on that little ring that the next time that the loop runs will be picked up and will be executed. This means that you can do some stuff like non-blocking coding that goes a bit far for this session, but that's why we can do that. Uh, and a lot of things, therefore, accept event listeners, which means, hey you, Whenever this happens, I would like you to execute this. In our case, we know that every browser has a window object. This is the root of the browser. Nothing is below it. This is the lowest point that you can communicate in, uh, oh, in a browser session, so JavaScript for the, for the browser. We can add an event listener for DOM content loaded. And when the DOM content is loaded, DOM, and by the way, is you know, everything that is the HTML, the representation of the HTML. In JavaScript, we call that the DOM, the document object model. It's, you know, if you want to Google for how to manipulate HTML with JavaScript, search for DOM. And whenever this is done, uh, hello, we are ready. Now, happens, just to show you, this is not an arbitrary name. If I make a little typo here, we don't get anything because this event doesn't exist. The browser does, does not have the concept of a uh, dumb content loaded 111 event. However, it does know a dumb content loaded event. Great. So what do we want to do? What we want to do is we want to open up a connection to the server and we want to retrieve some data and then we're going to alert the data. If you can do that, you can basically build anything, right? Like everything else builds on top of that. So how do we do that in a browser? Well, we need to build up a request because, you know, everything in HTML, HTTP, it's all a request. And every browser, nowadays at least, uh, has an object in it, which is the, uh, the XML HTTP request. Whenever you see in frameworks XHR and those kinds of things, yeah, this is the X. This is the H, and this is the R. They all refer to this object. This is the only way to break out, out of the browser for an HTTP request. There are a couple of other cool things nowadays, uh, event sources, uh, web sockets, and a couple of other things. But this is the basis of AJAX 2.0, web 2.0, 3.0, 8.12, I don't know. Um, so the autonomy of an HTML, of, a, of an HTTP request is that we open up a request. Right? We have a request and we're going to open it up. In HTTP, we have the concept of verbs. Maybe you've seen get, put, post, delete, all these things. These are HTTP verbs. And with these, you express your intent. For instance, a get, the intent of a get is to retrieve information and not do anything else on the server. The intent of a post is to trigger something. The intent of a put is to mutate something. In this case, we're only going to work with the get. So we're going to tell that we want to open up a connection to our server, and we're going to open up the server to a path called slash message. And in order to actually trigger this request, we need to send the request. right? So now we are sending a get request to the endpoint slash message. So let's see what happens when we do that. Well, nothing really. but. Let's see what happens if we open up the developer tools. Like every browser nowadays comes with great developer tools, and you can see a lot. So in our case, we can see right here that there was a request sent to the path slash message. And what it returns is the exact same file that we already returned. Now, why is that? Because when we go to our server, all we have here is a server 
that when there is a connection that wants anything, we will open up the stream, send it back, which means we have no router, right? Let's fix that. So let's say that this, oh wait, that's just to show you. Uh, right now this server serves this file on every path that we give it, right? Because the fact that we have paths in HTTP, that you have different things, this is something that is done by the code, not by the, this, you know, you have to be explicit about this. So, we're going to fix that. For starters, we want to make sure that if our request asks us for something on the URL, which is the same as slash, which is index, which is the root of our server, then we should do this. Let's see if that works. Well, that works. Hey, you see our message? It is still loaded. It's not returning us anything. Why is that? Well, let's go through the server. If the URL of the request is slash, aka root, serve something back, but nothing else happens. As before, if we are not explicitly telling the request that it's done, that it's ended, if you remember the rest.end call that we just did, it will just stay open, which by the way is very cool because that way you can send stuff back to your client uh, without closing the connection. You can do some really cool stuff with that, but that's not what we're gonna do now. Let's do the first thing first. If a server doesn't know what to do, right, it's convention to tell your client that you have a 404, something is not found. So let's do that first. Not right head, 404. Uh, now let's just, we, we will tell it that we have a content type. Let's call it text plane. This is like the default. If you don't know what you're serving back, just call it text plane. That's just, this is, this is the standard. Um, and then we just write, File not found. Rest dot end. Let's try this again. Now we see that what we get back is a file not found. So we now have a 404. We now effectively have a server that opens up on a port, will accept connections to it, will make a, a choice whether or not it should serve back a file, and if it cannot determine what to do, it will send a 404. We've just built an entire web application. But this is not what we want to do, right? What we want to do is we want to say else if the request URL URL uh, message, we want to do something. We want to write back something and then enter request. So let's see what happened. Okay, now we have a full flash router. Now we actually have multiple paths uh, that do different things based on what the, uh, 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 the URL that the client requested was. So every framework that's out there, Express in, uh, on Node.js or Ruby on Rails in the, in the case of, of Ruby or Django or uh, what other Java frameworks, I'm not, I'm not quite sure essentially do this. Somewhere you can condense the code and bring it back to this. This is routing. This is it. This is the big secret. <laughs> and they just do it, you know, some abstraction, makes stuff a little bit easier to extend it, but at the end of the day, it's a very elaborate if-else statement that checks if it is this URL, do that. If it is that URL, do that. So, we are actually getting this back, but we're not doing anything with it, right? Uh, right now, which means, okay, we have done a full round trip to the server, but it's kind of boring because nothing is happening. Let's make it slightly less boring. Now, in the same way that a window in a, in a browser accepts event handlers based on certain events, there are more objects that do that. One of these objects is the XML HTTP request. So, what we could do on a request like this is add an event listener. Uh, listener. And that event listener can be load. And 
whenever it is done, it should run a piece of code. So for now, let's just alert ready and back from the server. Great. So let's see if this works. Hey, this piece of code is now triggered. Just to prove to you that this is not done just because I typed it there, in here, if we were to say uh, set timeout, which is JavaScript's way of you know waiting for some time, uh, we want to actually end the response, and we want to do that in uh, three seconds from now, 3,000 milliseconds, so that's three seconds. Now, it took a while. The connection was open, and this piece, will, uh, this piece of code will trigger as soon as the request is done. But let's take that out. Let's just do it like this because we want to have a fast server, right? Okay, so now what? We know that we have a server. We know that the server makes a distinction about what, uh, what URLs are being asked. It will make a different decision based on those URLs. This means that we effectively have built a router. Uh, we have a client that first connects to it via the browser and opens up the connection against the HTML and then does a second request via an XML HTTP request. So we have a client in a client, which is kind of cool, actually, that the browser does that so easily. Uh, but now we need to do something with the data. So let's alert what actually comes back. What we can do in order to do that is we can ask the request, once it's done, for its response text. So let's see what happens now. Something. OK, that's kind of boring, right? Let's make this. Uh, a new date just for now. I uh, need to do that like this. Hello. It now is new plus date plus on the server. Let's see if this works better. So every time I run this, you will see that the time is slightly different. So what have we done now effectively? We've now created dynamic content. This is the whole idea of creating dynamic content and this is what every framework does. In some way, shape or form, they just put a lot of <laughs> code in between you and this part of it. Um, now, this is still kind of boring because now usually you don't work with just a piece of text, right? You usually work with some JSON or some HTML or whatever. So let's turn this into JSON. This is actually quite trivial. Uh, it's easier to do it like this because that makes it easier to make it valid. Okay, so now we say that the key whoops, uh, message is this string all the way up to here, and that's it. Okay. Now we're getting back JSON, but it doesn't mean anything for the browser right now, right? Because if we look here, we see that the browser is just treating this as text. In the same way as we did that before, we could even we can say, okay, our response, we're gonna tell the server that everything is fine, everything worked as we expected. And what I'm sending you back is some JSON. Again, it's useful to memorize a couple of MIME types like plain text, HTML, JSON, some images. So let's see what happens now. Uh, apparently nothing great. Uh, well, let's see what's wrong. First argument must be a string. Wait, where, what? Oh, right head, my fault. Here we go. Now, if we look here, do you see how it's now highlighted? Now, that doesn't really mean anything, but it does mean that the browser is right now understanding that what we're dealing with is JSON, which means that any client will know that it is JSON, which means that every client knows what to do, which is kind of the point of HTTP, right? Now, let's round this off. What we want to do is we want to make this something that we can actually work with, right? Because JSON, I don't know, everybody knows JSON. It is the standard way that we communicate right now. It stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a very simple way to write out 
complex data and almost every language in the world has a way to make that useful again. Uh, so you now are working with an object instead of just a piece of text. The browser is nice enough to give us a JSON object that can do some stuff. For instance, it can park. Now, let's see what happens if we parse this. We're going to log some stuff out to the console so we can actually play with it. And there we are. We have a message. This is our object. This is the thing we just did. Our object has a property, which is a message which has some text. And now for the last step, we are going to just alert it. And there we are. So what have we done? We've built a server with a router that will handle any request correctly because either it is going to be a 404, which is I don't know what to do, or it is going to be our index.html, which is exactly what we want to serve, or it is going to be our little blob of JSON. Everything is annotated correctly as far as the server is concerned. Our browser is a client that can connect to our server. It will get back HTML and it will be told that it is HTML, and now it can open up an extra additional request uh, and get back some JSON and work with it as data. This is the basis of every framework out there. They don't do anything else than this. They use these tools. There's no magic. There's nothing else going on except for this and making it more convenient to work with. Um, and that's actually what I wanted to, to show you. I don't know. Are there any questions? <laughs>